taking out our cucumbers this uh, summer day and getting ready to put some cowpeas in to just hold that place for our fall garden. So I've got cowpeas growing over there already. I'm going to put some more in just to be a, a cover crop and if I get some peas out of it, great, but come October or so, I'll probably be pulling those out too and putting something else in. So let's clear up this garden. <laughs> sad when your whole garden is bare and your whole cucumber patch is in one hand. <laughs> That's the way summer goes around here. I put all my infested foliage in a trash can and I do not compost this stuff because this has powdery mildew, you can see it there on the leaf, and some of it has spider mites. And if we dug around in there we'd find plenty of spider mites. I'm going to let them sit in this black trash can. That uh, sunlight will heat that up and kill everything in there. And it will go out with the trash. I don't have to worry about those in my garden anymore. One thing you'll notice about <clears throat> my garden bed here is the lack of weeds. Um, there's weeds in there. There's some weeds. I've had to pull a few out here and there. But for the most part, this has been a weed-free, trouble-free garden because I mulch heavily. And um, what I have to do now, since all that mulch is still there, I want to preserve that mulch. So I'm going to rake all of that mulch mostly into where my cowpeas are and expose the bare soil there. That way I can plant my new cowpeas in that soil. And once they start coming up, I can begin to rake that mulch back over there. So. I'm not going to till the soil. I just cut the cucumber vines off at the at the base. Their roots are still down in there. They'll just decompose in place. And so I have a, a no-till garden and all that soil is uh, ready to receive my cowpeas as soon as I rake that mulch off. cucumber patch is gone. We have nice fertile ground ready for <clears throat> the next crop. <clears throat> We've taken out most of the weeds. We've got a few hangers on there. Now you'll notice that when I pull weeds I'm usually pulling them from along the edge because in those holes in my cinder blocks that's where the weeds grow up and I generally don't uh, do, do anything with those except pull them when they get too big. But in the garden bed itself the weeds have been suppressed. You can see the roots remaining behind from the cucumbers. I'll leave those there. I'll plant my beans in between all these, you know, just in that garden bed. And we will have cowpeas that will look like this before too long. And right here, you can see I finally got some cowpeas there. Wow, these just snuck up on me. I didn't even see those, but I see a lot of them in there now. Awesome. Cowpeas are good because they suppress the weeds already now every now and then you come in here you'll find a, a weed growing up in here you'll find a you know a, a there's one right there you'll find one of these guys right here nuts edge or something trying to poke up between them but for the most part these you can see that dense canopy they keep the weeds down really well and that's what I'm gonna do here so the ground is actually pretty compacted and hard down there Rather than till it though, I'm just going to take a fork and loosen up the soil before I put my beans in. be sowing these cowpeas. This variety is called clay. It is an old American heirloom and I've got a seed pack from last year and one from this year. So uh, I'm going to sow them both in the same place. Since I'm mainly sowing this as a ground cover, 
I'm just going to broadcast them. I'll show how easy it is. I'll just take these cow peas. It's not a whole lot. And I'll uh, carefully spread them through the soil here. All you do then is gently rake them in. You'll still have some on the surface. Most of them you'll rake in. Now what you can do, if you're really worried about some of your seeds not getting covered well, is you can come back with a real fine kind of potting soil or some peat moss or some compost and you can sprinkle it over here. I just happen to have some. I've pulled up a couple of potted plants. So I'm going to take some of that soil and just sift it over here. So what I have here is a bunch of old potting soil and a little bit of peat moss in there, some seed starting mix, and all of this stuff has been uh, is being recycled. So I'll just break it up with my hand until it's nice and fine, and I'll spread it over my bed here, just to ensure all of our seeds get nice and covered. Now you want to water beans in really well. That hard bean that's a pretty dense, pretty dense seed and needs to soak up as much water as possible. If you don't soak them beforehand, um, I prefer then if, if you're not soaking them beforehand to put them in in the evening so that when you soak your ground, your uh, your water doesn't just evaporate away. No, Phoebe, no. Ugh, gardening with dogs. Well, it's also time to pick some okra. I've got some okra here that uh, has been the subject of a fertilizer trial. I've been using these uh, okras in pots to compare my uh, fish emulsion with my homemade nasty, awful, horrible brew of uh, weeds rotting in an anaerobic solution. So, um, so far, I can't tell any difference. I'm supposed to do a taste test, but I'm not going to do the taste test until the plants are a little bit more mature. But uh, for now, I've got some okra and I'm going to fry it tonight. That's about the maximum size I would go for, and I can feel they're pretty tender. These are some nice red varieties. That's not a lot, but it's not gonna, it's gonna get woody if I leave them on there, so I've gotta start eating this okra and enjoying it. And since I'm the only one that eats okra at my house, that's a good, that's a good harvest for me. I'm gonna go fry it up right now. So, on this, this week's edition of what's in the compost, I've got corn chips, got food from my friends you know people love you when they bring you food scraps i just spied a pear in there some radishes and some various greens i've got some paper chips in there an egg carton and uh, yeah the compost is doing well it's dipped down a little now in it's uh in the heat it's not as hot as it was indicating i need to turn it i need to take out some of what's on the bottom level and move it over into my second bin and keep this top layer, which is mostly fresh compost, keep that burning and going with, uh, with some more coarse compost. While in the second bin, everything on the bottom needs to go and, and kind of do that slow process to finish it off. I have been picking grapes. I've enjoyed a few of these grapes. These over here are gonna be my white wine grapes. Got a lot of them coming in these days ripening up that one right there that's about what you want right there you can feel them and you can tell if they're ripe by feeling them that's got a few days to go but for the most part these are coming in nicely i'll pick them as they ripen and i'll put them in the freezer save them up and we're going to be making some wine white wine muscadine grapes well we got us some nice okra it's looking good so uh, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Uh, again, like I said in the last video, we're doing about one a week maybe because it's summer, it's hot, and until, start, uh, until we start really ramping up with putting in our fall garden and starting the seeds for that fall garden, there won't be as many videos during the heat of summer. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We'd be obliged. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.